So in an earlier video, I replaced the rear upper control arm. And after doing that, I found that I needed to pretty much replace everything in the rear suspension. So this video covers that work that I did. It's not a how-to video, but it uh, should help you with some problems you may encounter. So I replaced all control arms, the rear toe link, the upper and lower bushings and the knuckle, the rear reel bearing, and the rear brake backing plates. So I felt uh, no time better to do this than when it's minus 16 degrees Celsius outside. You ready to go outside? Ready to go outside in the cold? So I ordered my parts from LR Direct. Uh, this isn't a paid advertisement or anything. It just happened to be where I ordered the parts from. I found it uh, the most convenient for myself and the quickest way to get parts and uh, and the cheapest. Okay, so I got all the parts laid out here for the uh, big suspension and brake redo. Uh, upgrading to the uh, V8 brakes. So uh, got new uh, new caliper carriers here, and then the uh, Brembo V8 size uh, rotors. Um, this is uh, the bottom knuckle bushing, upper knuckle bushing. Uh, this is the new C clip for that uh, for the lower bushing. Got the uh, bolt kits for the upper and the lower rear arms. It's very handy. Uh, new track rod here. It does not come with a uh, new bolt, so uh, or sorry, a new nut on it. So I ordered the nut here. Hopefully, it's the right one. Uh, what else? Uh, ordered everything from LR Direct in the uh, UK because it was uh, much cheaper, except for the brake hardware. Uh, that I ordered from the dealer here. There's a really good dealer in Toronto that has uh, online ordering and the prices are cheap and the shipping's fast. I'll put a link down in the description to them uh, if you're in Canada. Highly recommended. Um, but yeah, so I ordered the, the Mealy Heavy Duty lower arms because I got a clunk in the front as well and a tie rod gone. So yeah, these are the heavy duty arms. They have a instead of like the factory that I believe has this bushing here that's fluid filled these ones use a solid bushing so hopefully they'll last longer they're supposed to have a four-year warranty uh, the only other gotcha is that the upper arms did not come with new nuts but I'm pretty sure I think they're either these ones that I got a pack of 10 or uh, some other ones I have a pack of 10 here somewhere so hopefully that's covered uh, also got a stabilizer link for the front inner and outer TRW uh, tie rods and ball joint, or sorry, inner and outer tie rods. Um, these are the V8, new V8 uh, front caliper carriers. Again, the Brembo brakes. Those I just got at here in Canadian Tire. They're about, I think, 120 or 130 on sale uh, each for the front, and then $100 each for the rear for these. And they have the coating on them, so hopefully they won't rust like the old ones. And I went with the Brembo uh, rear pads, and then I actually ordered these front pads uh, from LR Direct because they were quoted as being, uh, I think, the original equipment. So I just want to keep the dust down. So, um, instead of more talking, I should get out there and start working on this. So at this point, I've just pulled off the brake caliper and get a good idea how rusty everything is and uh, why I needed to uh, replace most of the suspension and the uh, brake backing plates. Here's a time lapse of removing the lower arm on suspension. I did make a mistake. Uh, I, with the torch, I uh, burnt the boot for the CV joint, which means I had to remove the knuckle which turns out uh, was a good idea anyway, so that forced me to uh, do the rear backing plate. Here I'm cutting a bolt for the lower control arm using a Sawzall. Since most of them were uh, rusted and, and seized, this was the quickest way to get them out. I found the Diablo carbide blades the best to use on the Sawzall for this. The rear toe link 
nuts were uh, pretty rusted and I couldn't get a socket the correct size on there. So uh, I found a grinder was the best way and just cut the bolt and nut at the same time. At this point I have the uh, lower arm removed, use the sawzall on all the bolts and it's uh, easier actually to cut the arm to get at one of the bolts with your sawzall. And so uh, just showing what it looks like with it removed here. One of the axles was really seized and I needed to use a puller and hammer on it to get it to uh, come out. Another challenge was the rear parking brake cables. They were really seized to the backing plates. Uh, so I found using a heat gun, along with lots of penetrating fluid, I could finally get them loose. Uh, but it was a lot of work and I was determined not to uh, have to replace them. Uh, it took a while. You can see here in these pictures just how corroded the uh, parking brake cable was. I ended up having to uh, use a die grinder to cut them out uh, because uh, they were so seasoned there. But you have to be very careful not to cut through this white plastic piece here. There's also a snap ring that you need to remove. So just make sure you remove that before you try to get them out. So here I am just pressing the uh, bearing out of the rear knuckle hub. You can see it took about uh, five tons of uh, force to uh, get it to come free. Another problem I ran into was after pressing out the rear hub from the knuckle, uh, the inner race was stuck on the hub. So uh, here I am just grinding out a slot in the race to try to uh, get it to expand a bit so I could uh, knock it off. This one took a little longer than I was hoping, but uh, it eventually came out. Here I'm just showing the uh, bushing removal toolkit and the sizes of the dies that I use to remove the lower bushing on the knuckle. Uh, the other thing I think I did was uh, 
course, remove the snap ring first and then a bit of the rubber just to make it easy to uh, push through. Here I'm installing the new bushing in the knuckle. Uh, this toolkit really makes this job super easy and if you're gonna uh, do any of this rear suspension work, I would really recommend getting this type of toolkit. And here we are just installing the uh, snap ring and here's the part number that you need for that lower bushing snap ring. So it's pretty simple to do. So I've installed a new CV joint boot and here I am just putting the uh, half shaft back on and yes that's uh, the old nut that I'm uh, using on the end there just to hammer this on.
to install the outer large band clamp for the boot, I uh, made up this little tool to tighten the uh, clamp. I think you can find other examples of this on the uh, internet. I'm pretty sure that's where I got the idea. Uh, because I didn't have the correct tool for it. Uh, but it, it went pretty uh, easy doing it this way. It's All it is is a piece of tube steel. And then I uh, use this uh, cotter pin to, uh, to tighten up the clamp. doing the inner clamp here and for that one I actually had the correct tool so that was even simpler. So here's everything back together just about besides the uh, parking brake stuff. The one problem I ran into was with the uh, calipers supplied by the dealer, the caliper brackets. They were wrong and the dealer insisted they were correct, but <laughs> they didn't bolt up to my knuckles, so they're clearly wrong. And uh, of course, Advanced Factors in the UK uh, points this out on their website, and that's who I ended up having to buy the correct ones from. So with that, it's done. Uh, it was a fairly straightforward job. Uh, what made it really uh, more challenging was just because it's a rust belt car and everything's seized and rusted so everything takes twice as long as it should other than that uh, I think I spent oh it was probably a good four days doing both sides and that's it so thanks for watching <laughs>